So in today's video, we'll be looking at some of the evidence for evolution. And uh, we say that there are namely three of them. Uh, and, and for the exams, you will need to be able to sort of explain what these three types of evidence are and also say um, how we can use them to help us find out how evolution works. So in exams, you will need to be able to say what these three types of evidence are, uh, explain how they work, and also perhaps evaluate them for a little bit. So say how we can use them, what they're good for, and perhaps some of the problems that it will come into play uh, when we use them. So the first one we'll think about is paleontology. I mean, like a complicated word, but simply put, it is the study of fossils. So we can, uh, archaeologists can dig up uh, fossils from different places and then we can compare them and see if there are any similarities or differences in order to help us identify what species it might be and, and perhaps evolutionary relationships. There are different types of fossils, so there will be the normal hard ones like in rocks that you can see they're mineralized and formed under the great pressure or perhaps there will be some that are frozen or trapped in amber so they are uh, different types of it. So for the study of fossils, we can actually uh, discover a couple of things. So first of all, we can see that simple life forms can evolve into more complex ones, for example, without a nucleus or naked DNA into one with the nucleus and then more complicated ones. We can also see that animals need plants uh, to survive and reproduce because we found many earlier plant fossils. Uh, so sometimes we say these plant uh, fossils existed from ages ago earlier than uh, these animals' fossils. We can also see how closely related organisms might be based on uh, looking at their similarities in fossils. So for example, we can see if we've got three different types of fossils from these different animals, we can look at the differences in the, in the structure perhaps and to discover if they are closely related or non-related. And also, let's say if this one here is now extinct, there's another fossil discovered further along the line and we can then also discover, predict to see if they are related in some sense or their descendants from this ancestor there. But one problem with paleontology is the fact that uh, we've got an incomplete record of them because fossils are mostly discovered by accident. Perhaps when there are archaeologists working on a site or perhaps if there is an earthquake or erosion of rocks that expose these fossils uh, to the surface, then people discovered it by chance. During these pl uh, tectonic plate movements uh, to cause earthquake to expose these fossils to the surface, they might break them, or well, the fact is that we still got lots of them undiscovered underground. So we can't uh, have a complete record of fossils at this moment. However, there will be other two other ways that we can uh, prove, uh, to provide evidence for evolution, and the second one is comparative anatomy. What we do in comparative anatomy is to look at the anatomical similarities or differences between organisms. Here, you can see that I've got a human arm and then a bat, bat's wing. And we say that these are uh, homologous structures. And you, here you can see that there are many similarities. For example, the arm, the main bit of the arm is made up of two different sections of the bone, cut down some, somewhat in the middle. Then we've got five digits and also five digits on the bat. And that is evidence of divergent evolution. And that is comparative anatomy. And the third one is comparative biochemistry. It's kind of the same concept as comparative anatomy, but this time rather than comparing a uh, anatomical structure like bone structures, we're looking at the biochemistry, so specifically the DNA bases and protein amino acid sequences in the body. So here we'll look at uh, something called protein and enzyme evolution. The principle behind it is that important molecules are highly conserved. So for example, if there are certain proteins or enzymes that are crucial to the survival of uh, living organisms, surely they would keep it about the same, because if you change the structure of it, then it won't do the same function and you will not be able to survive because it is involved in such an important uh, biochemistry. So for example, a classic one is cytochrome C. Uh, that is involved in respiration that every single or living organisms do. So what they did was they sequenced the cytochrome C am amino acid sequence from different organisms. So for example, they get it from humans, from chimpanzees, whales, etc., and lots of other different organisms. And they they put them together and looked at any similarities and differences. And interestingly, what they found out was that organisms that are closely related, they would have a very, uh, pretty much the same amino acid sequence. So for example, if you compare cytochrome C amino acid sequence of humans and chimpanzees, it turns out to be exactly the same, even though we are different species. However, if you compare it between humans and let's say a whale or even 
um, a, a, a plant, they would be there would be more differences in between them, even though they're still somewhat similar. So that is the concept of it. They would be highly conserved. And through, if there are any differences, it's just showing that there is evolution taking place, and that's why you will be of very different species. So in a nutshell, comparative biochemistry is the uh, study of similarities and differences in DNA sequence and protein amino acid sequence uh, of certain molecules. Keep it is the important molecules such as cytochrome C or rRNA if that makes up ribosomes, uh, if they are involved in some very important key survival alchemical reactions, then they would be highly conserved in order to keep that same function. And what we can do is to sequence it and then compare it between organisms to find out the evolutionary relationships. If two organisms are more closely related to each other, it would have a similar uh, DNA base or amino acid sequence. And the more differences there are, the less related they would be. And you can study this with uh, the neutral mutation rate, meaning that the mutation is not uh, beneficial nor harmful. And then you can estimate roughly uh, when they had the last common ancestor, so saying when did they last split up uh, into two different species. So there you have it. So there are three different types of evidence uh, to show evolution taking place. First of all, that we've got paleontology, the study of fossils. We've got comparative anatomy and comparative biochemistry, where we compare structural differences and chemical differences between uh, different organisms.